There he is. <laughs> All right, first in the series on the fly, here we are. <laughs> going to taste some wine, going to talk about it. This is our on the fly series, uh, so welcome to Lang Estate Winery virtually. Um, I'm Jesse Lang, second generation wine grower and winemaker here for my family's uh, Lang Estate property in smack dab in the middle of the Dundee Hills, kind of top uh, first concentric circle of the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Um, I'm Don Lang. Patriarch. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Patriarch and founder of our company, along with Wendy Lane. Um, could only fit two of us on the uh, on screen today, so that's why we're here, but I uh, wanted to bring you guys the, uh, the upcoming wines that have been selected for our spring shipment for both our Melange and our Rouge Crew uh, wine club shipments. Um, so hopefully you've seen a few of those, maybe you've drank a few, um, that's always the plan. Get us through these, uh, these tough times that we're currently finding ourselves in, but um, yeah, a little history on um, the selection process. We work with our team to select the wines um, for our wine club members, you guys, and uh, select wines that are the best wines that we make um, across the board, uh, wines that have really high accolades. Um, they're small production wines. Both of these two Chardonnays are really limited production, just uh, four or five barrels a piece from our estate and Freedom Hill, uh, both 2018s. And then the Pinot Noirs are very small, uh, small handcrafted items as well. So there are a couple single vineyard wines um, from our estate, Dundee Hills property, that's a 24 barrel blend. Um, same with our Freedom Hill uh, 2017. And then the Liberty Bell 2017, which is um, a single vineyard property wine, Pinot Noir, but just a couple different blocks um, atop the Freedom Hill vineyard, just to our south um, in the foothills of the coast range. So. Really pleased to be able to share these with you and um, hopefully drink with you too. <laughs> or we're gonna taste some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, it's easier for me to talk when I have wine in my glass. Yeah, so you get a little parched, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so here's you, the sir. estate, you're very welcome. Through all these winemaking years, you can still pour. <laughs> I can still, and I can still drink. So what, uh, what sort of, you know, brought you and Wendy here to make, um, to make Chardonnay? I mean, that was one of our first core varietals in, back in 1987, yes? Yeah, I think, the, it, it, yeah, it, it, it was. It, it's taken us a while to get to, to this point, for, for sure. You know, for us, the, the watershed moment was getting the Dijon clones, uh, you know, imported, uh, you know, Oregon State University really played a, Go Beavers. Go Beavers it, it, it played a big role in that. And you know, once we had the Dijon clones here, and, and they were, um, you know, tested for vi viruses. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. Should I? <laughs> screen in the nursery. Screen, yep. screen in the, <laughs> the nursery, and uh, and and released to uh, to the vineyards of Oregon and planted. And the vineyards got a little bit of uh, vine age in them. And we, we started to get really some remarkable complexity and started to achieve um, sort of a, a sort of the, the classic uh, classic status that we we had hoped for you know back in the 80s but couldn't really achieve because the uh, clonal ver diversity wasn't there sure so we've got that clonal diversity now and we're clearly in a in a new uh, a new era yeah. here for uh, for Chardonnay. Yeah, it's uh, 100% Dijon clones for all our Chardonnays. Um, this is our estate bottling here. So the majority of this comes from our 76, 96, and 95 clones. Um, just a few barrels were selected for this particular bottling. Um, so this is a really nice sort of amalgamation of those different clones with an eye towards making a wine that is really indicative of, the, of our Dundee Hills property. So those blocks are located um, just behind us, <laughs> right on our Dundee Hills site. Um, a little bit lower on the hill, we're sitting at about 800 foot, 750 feet. Um, our blocks for Chardonnay are a little bit lower on the hill, about 600 to 550 feet. Um, so a little bit kind of mid, mid to the lower portion of our estate property. So still, still moderate to high elevation, uh, wouldn't be considered low elevation. Um, but as you get up the hill, um, we top out at about 850 feet at our Mia block. So it gives you a little bit of the range. Um, stylistically for Chardonnay, I mean, I think it's, it's a varietal. It's been by far the most widely consumed varietal here, white varietal here in the United States. Um, and I think, you know, from our days, making wine, you obviously preceded me at Santa Barbara Winery, and then I worked there in the, the mid-90s for Bruce McGuire, but 
stylistically our Chardonnays kind of differ from kind of that that kind of oaky buttery style that people kind of know. Yeah, I think it, that was a style that we tried to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, I, you know, I think back in the early days of, of you know of wine consumption and in, in consumption in North America, um, they. You know, the, uh, uh, I, there, we went through a whole era where oaky, the more oaky and the more buttery you could get for a Chardonnay, the, the more people liked it. But it was not uh, not in the classical paradigm uh, in, in our estimation, you know, and, and therefore, uh, you know, we're delighted to have come to this point now. With these, these are, are, I think, classic Chardonnays, and they're really of great interest to me. And the more... You know, the, the as the years go by, I mean, we drank a sixteen just this last week. You know, and it, I mean that's that's four years old. It's holding up beautifully. You could argue that it's, it's better than it was when it was re bottled and released, even. And 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 that's what I, that's what I want. That's what I want to achieve with the with the Chardonnays. You know, that level of complexity and le level of ageability that that Pinot Noir has. You know, and so I mean those are the big two. You know the the Pinot Noirs, we, we established a reputation for that earlier on, and now the Chardonnays, I think, are, are uh, I, I think they're they're equal to the Pinot Noirs. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty bullish about them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, I, and we've our wine team has come out of blending sessions, just just going, wow, you know, that was that that challenge was every every bit as challenging as as blending Pinot Noir. Just in terms of putting the components together and the, uh, yeah. the puzzle and pieces to make the best. And the complexity. And it's yeah. like, oh, you, and, and it's one of the things that always drew me to Pinot Noir was this, uh, that, 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 uh, the subtlety and the complexity of it. It's like when you go back to that glass and, you know, after 15 minutes or, or an hour and there's something that one's giving you something that it didn't give you an, an hour ago. So, so when the Chardonnay does that and these Chardonnays do that for me, it's like, right on that's 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 what i like and this estate tends to have really nice vibrancy i think it's a core component of our winemaking style um you know our wines have a lot of fruit character this one has a, just a tremendous amount of tropical fruit um and sort of just dried papaya and pineapple um i really like that that component touch of citrus beautiful floral components in the uh in the aromatics but always with great Chardonnay, all those things are buttressed, buttressed by just a tremendous vibrant acidity, that backbone of acidity that gives the wine that energy and the life force that for me always draws me to great Chardonnay and kind of defines great Chardonnay is that acid profile yeah. um, where the wine can be pretty racy, bright, long, long finish on the wine, but also just mouth-watering too. And it's those components for me that really draw me to the varietal and just keep keep us coming back to, to these Chardonnays. Um, yeah, this wine for me just has, it just, it's just classical, just throw a dart into the bullseye for, uh, for Dundee Hills kind of expression um, and, and lift and vibrancy in the wine. I'm just, I'm really pleased with these, these wines. 2018 was a pretty warm vintage too, so uh, making sure that we kind of captured these wines while they had that energy and vibrancy was was a very um, important part of our approach for picking decisions for especially these two uh, blocks of Chardonnay uh, for both Freedom Hill and Estate. So trying to make sure that we marshaled enough resources to pick before things became overripe because we no no acidity was no acid was added to any of these wines. Um, so having that that vibrancy to kind of like I said buttress the fruit. Um, was kind of a little bit of a challenge, but uh, we made that happen, and I think the wines show show the I don't know the wisdom of making those calls. But mm -hmm. uh, they definitely have that that kind of that richness that's always sort of um, the yin and yang with the vibrancy. So yeah, pretty fun. It's an acid balance, so it makes it ageable too. It's yeah. like I mean, you know, the aforementioned 2016 estate, you know, it's just a really nice acidity. This complexity and, and integration now. Ah, oh, crack, <laughs> crack and pour. Um, so um, this is kind of the sister wine for our single vineyard Chardonnay is off our estate. This is the Freedom Hill, uh, twenty eighteen as well. So really nice comparison, a little horizontal of two Chardonnays. 
Um, I'm very fortunate that I get to work with the Duche family that farms and operates Freedom Hill. Um, Dan and Helen Duche and their son Dustin now run the, runs the farm. Um, just talked with Dustin the other day. So, uh, so I talked to Dan. You talked to Dan. <laughs> so uh, this is a block we've, we've been making uh, Pinot Noir from the Freedom Hill Vineyard since the 1990 vintage. Um, I'm very fortunate to be a part of that. Um, but this block was planted in um, 1992. Um, this block of Chardonnay and it's 76 clones. So it's just one clone of Chardonnay. So not only is it a single vineyard and single block, but it's a single clone of Dijon clone Chardonnay. Um, it's just a little over two acres and um, yeah, we've, we've been making a single vineyard Chardonnay from Freedom Hill since, I want to say, 2001. Hmm. Um, so, um, stylistically kind of in the same vein, but very different predicated on the vineyard sourcing. So, Freedom Hill is much different than our state in that it's all um, uh, based on uh, marine sedimentary soils. So, those are marine sediments, a subtype called bell pine. And uh, so, we farm it maybe a little different than we would the jewelry soils here on the estate. Um, provides a little bit more kind of richness and sort of just more unctuous mid palate um, expansion density. I think it's a little bit richer than the estate, um, but still has that that fine tune acidity that gives it the life as well. Yeah, you agree with that? Yeah, I yeah that's, agree. It. that's I agree implicit. More. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this one, the, the Freedom Hill for me, um, when we're you know vinifying the wines, we're making the picking decisions. For me, Freedom Hill tends to provide a little bit more of that just sort of like flashy tropical fruit um, that, that maybe a little bit more so than the estate. So I think those, those components shine through um, and kind of carry the wine from the fruit profile a little bit more than, than our estate bottling. Um, but again, still uh, a little bit a little bit richer. I think our French oak profile on this wine is fermented in French oak punching. So there's 500 liter French oak barrels. Um, we have a number of those. Um, I think we have 40 overall. We have some concrete vessels and we have stainless steel vessels too. So we have kind of a, a, a broad approach and a lot of tools in our toolbox for, for fermentation, um, fermentation vessels and, and how we blend and age the wine. So um yeah this is just a, a little bit of a, a snapshot of freedom hill just only 150 cases were bottled of this one any thoughts on the profile <laughs> oh yeah I, compared the, to compare the two you know I, i'd say i you know i think i think the estate has a more broad-based um, um, um palate of, of acidity mm. acidity on the palate than, than freedom does Free, you know freedoms maybe a little a little more forward a, a little more um voluptuous than than the estate mm -hmm. and i like them both for you know for the strengths that they have yeah sure and but both of them make me think of halibut <laughs> well you're always thinking about food it's almost lunchtime is fish or fishing you know, you know. So we can move on to some Pinot Noirs, probably a good idea. Uh, we have corkscrews, we have wine, we're going to make it, pretty sure. <laughs> do, you, do you want some red glasses? I'm yeah. Not, I'm not pouring these out. No, don't pour those out. It's Friday, it's right? Good. Yeah, it is Friday. It's happy hour somewhere. <laughs> So we're going to be pouring um, three different Pinot Noirs, um, all from the same vintage. So this will be a horizontal as well, and an industry parlance for wines, same type of wines, but across the same vintage. Um, so this is all from the 2017 vintage, so a year older than the two previous Chardonnays that we just tasted. Um, 2017 for me was a vintage that uh, I knew was going to be very good from the outset. Um, kind of a warmer growing season, warmer conditions during picking. Um, so we pick pretty fast and furiously. Um, but uh, uh, it was a vintage for me that really grew on me in the cellar in ways that um, maybe surprised me um, than some years. Some years you have a really kind of a clear idea of, of the personality of specific wines um, and specific kind of profile of the vintage. For me, the 17s just, um, 
like I knew they were good, but every month, like post ML for the for the Reds and for the Pinot Noirs, I just like it was like they got through ML in February, early March. We got into late March, and I was like, huh, okay. The building building momentum. We got into April, another layer of complexity. We got into into early summer in June, July, and I was starting to become blown away by the wines. Just there, the, the layers um, of fruit. The complexities, the spicy character of the vintage really started to show through and they became really compelling to me. And when we got to our blending stage for these single vineyard wines, um, it was just this panoply of, of wonderful barrels to, uh, to choose from and to compile the blends and uh, it was a really fun challenge for us to sit down and, and go through them together. Yes, I, I would say. Seat. Well, let's let's pour. Let's pour some. Okay. So, so you've, you've got the Liberty Bell there. Uh, we're going to do the Estate and oh, the Freedom Hill side okay. by side. We'll wrap up with Liberty Bell last. But so, 2017 Estate Pinot Noir. Um, give you guys a sense of what how we craft these wines. Um, every block in the vineyard and all our vineyards is all vinified separately. Um, so we we literally are making wines from 80 different blocks across the Willamette Valley vast majority of those on our state property here in the Dundee Hills and then within Freedom Hill. Um, so really fun to farm those blocks separately, um, monitor them separately, we sample them separately very diligently pre-harvest, we pick them separately by hand, um, they're fermented separately here at the winery, punched down separately, hand bucketed out all the free run juice, we take them to barrel separately. So if you look at all those different 80 blocks, um, we look at all the different barrels that we have. We're probably making up to almost 500 different barrels of Pinot Noir every year. And every single one of those we can trace back to a specific plot of land and tell you the clone, the rootstock, the soil type, um, vinification um, trajectory, everything, metrics, everything that you want to know, yeast profiles, barrel components, uh, barrel aging, age of wood, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll kind of ad nauseum. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. No, I, but, I uh, wasn't saying that. I didn't, like oh. I said, I just, this sounds sound pretty geeky to me. It gets a little geeky, but that's how we <laughs> that's why we tune the dials on making fine Pinot Noir. Yeah, but when we get to because the there stage, are there are distinctions in each of yes. those things, and that that's why you know I, I always say it's like if given the opportunity, we would love to take people through the, through the barrels, you know, especially in the spring maybe even a little later on in the spring, just go through these barrels because each barrel is its own, its own thing. Even the, like the same, you know, the Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir from the same block, uh, uh, you know, the same clone, same rootstock, and even even in, in the same barrels with, with and then say maybe we, we switch up the yeast and the, uh, the, the, the yeast contributes certain, you know, fermentation curve to the wine, and those will be different wines, ostensibly the same with everything. And the toast of the barrel, the, uh, the, the force that it's from, everything's the same, except for the yeast, and, and the two wines will be you know, quite different, and you know, remarkably so. It's like, oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. And so those are the things that kind of keep us going. <laughs> If you ever want to know Dunneedle's Estate Pomard as it contrasts and compares to Triple Seven or Vadensville, he just invited you for a barrel tour in the <laughs> cellar. Sound pretty formal to me. Um, Don at Langwinery.com. It's real easy just to email him. That's He's right. very responsive on email, so just uh, let him fly in. Yeah. We can do that in the current milieu because we have a six foot wine thief now. That's right. We can just, yeah. Just, yeah, and your dexterity, we can make yeah. it happen. Um, so really fun to uh, to see these two wines um, side by side. So a little background between the two. Again, estate, uh, just like the Chardonnay, is 100% volcanic soils here on our estate property, 45 acres total that we farm under the live program for the live certification uh, for sustainability. Um, all jewelry. Um, those wines there, uh, both of these wines are actually just 24 barrels each. So Jake, say off the estate when we're making that particular blend, um, we might have a subset of uh, maybe 250 barrels off the estate property total. Um, maybe up to like 50 or 60 through the course of the entire blend um, tasting season in the cellar. We'll select maybe 50 or 60 that are kind of in that next pool of range to be both qualitatively and quantitatively in the pocket for being selected for estate. And then we'll go through and select only 24 of that pool 
to make the very best expression of our Dundee Hills estate property. So that's kind of a, a fun challenge, um, but it, it is a challenge indeed because trying to um, assemble those components in a really collaborative way and the way the wines work together is part of the challenge that we feel as winemakers. And that's part of our, our job, frankly, um, is to make the very best wine from those pieces. And it's not really, and not necessarily about selecting the best 24 barrels. Um, that's certainly up for interpretation, but it's, it's about selecting the best 24 barrels that work the best together. And that's really the challenge that we find um, and we work towards for the whole year in the cellar when we're tasting and compiling those wines, because I don't think we're, we're necessarily like, you know, we don't make the wines, you know, we, we more sort of guide them and craft them. And that's sort of our job as, as winemakers um, is to be, uh, I don't know, uh, a vessel for terroir expression. So when we're selecting those barrels, we, we take that very seriously. Um, I certainly do being mm -hmm. second generation. It was a mandate to make, to make Dundee Hills expressive wine. So 24 barrels, Lang Estate, 2017. Nice. You still have some in your glass? I do, I do <laughs> but maybe not for much longer. <laughs> Anything that good. kind of it's defines good. those estate Jory, Jory Soils wines for you off the Dundee Well, Hills? yeah, it, it, generally speaking, it's, it, it's that, uh, you know, allspice character, cinnamon, clove, you know, cardamom, you know, s stuff like that. that. Those are defining characteristics of Dundee Hill Pinots for me, always have been. I mean, you can pick that up sometimes and, you know, from, from other growing areas, I think. But, you know, historically for me, the Dundee Hills is set for the, the spiciness. I think even Let would, would have said that. I uh, think so too, absolutely. And uh, but the the freedom for me just has has this pronounced and almost always has this. But but uh, for the, for me uh, at this juncture, this uh, you know twenty seventeen freedom is, is just uh, uh, you know how do you how do you come up with something that doesn't sound hackneyed. Uh, redolent of blackberries, you know. It's like it's, it's like the, the the blackberry fruit in that is just enormous um, and really uh, engaging. Yeah, yeah. Um, really fun to see these two wines side by side. I, I one of my favorite things to do in the cellar or in the tasting room or when I'm traveling and presenting the wines across the country um, is really show these two wines side by side because you know you delve down into making world class Pinot Noir. I think really the the difference, the the disparity between these two 100% Pinot Noirs off two different soil types and types and two blue ribbon vineyards is really really compelling to see them side by side. That juxtaposition of you know hopefully great expressions of Pinot Noir is really what makes it you know it's that chase that we try to figure out every single year. Um, and when you're trying to identify these wines and learn about them, I mean we're a 34 year old winery and we're still very much learning about about Pinot Noir. Um, pretty much every day it has something new to teach us. So um, try to listen for that and try to be guides for selecting those barrels. And they're really fun to see these wines side by side. Um, yeah, any other thoughts on those two Pinots? From you, the vintage? No, not really. I said, you know, I think that, you know, the 2017 is just, it's showing, showing great. You know, there's a, and you know, honestly, I don't, I don't remember it. Uh, you know, we've got some uh, vintage notes here, and I don't, I don't remember that it, it was a particularly wet spring, but I mean, it was a warm growing season, though. Yeah, it was, with, with some, some heat spikes. Yeah, well, I think but it's, all, it's almost got, you know, it's got, it, it, it uh, for me, this wine, it, caps, it, it seems to suggest to me, Maybe some a cooler vintage in a way, mm. you know, the way the acids pre present themselves, but uh, but yet there's there's sort of a warm vintage of really a forward fruit in them, mm -hmm. both. So you know that that's that's kind of kind of interesting. You haven't used your spittoon at all. Oh, is that what you're doing with that? I don't know. <laughs> what, what yeah, what is, is that, that for? for? Yeah. You're just <laughs> You're not drinking water, are you? No, no, no water. <laughs> um so uh so yeah, for me the two wines, I think that spice can 
component for the estate is really uh, a defining characteristics. And I think it plays in a really broad spectrum of different fruit characters. So it has both red fruit, some black fruit and blue fruit. So it, it has a really nice range of flavor complexity, um, all supported with a lot of those spices my mm -hmm. pops was talking about. Um, Freedom Hill is, is, is a fair bit different um, in the way that, that we view the wine, the way we've come to know that wine after 30 vintages. Um, it tends to be sort of more brooding, a lot darker. Um, it manifests more in the kind of black and blue fruit spectrum than the red fruit spectrum. We only have one block really of Freedom Hill that shows a little bit of, of red fruit time to time. Most all of them are in that. You said blackberry, black plum, like those components there I think are really um, characteristics of Freedom Hill wines. Some of our colleagues make some great Freedom Hill wines as well. Um, uh, Ken Wright, uh, you and Ken were the first two winemakers that identified the site and start working with the fruit from Freedom Hill. Um, Patty Green, um, uh, Purple Hands, uh, Mark Vlasic from St. Innocent. So we have a number of really top-notch winemakers working with Freedom Hill. Um, but you're one of the first and I think, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty fortunate to be able to work with the fruit there. I think we have nine blocks of Pinot Noir in that site now. So um, it's really fun to get to know it. I know it almost as well as I do our estate property, um, almost. So um, that sort of broody nature is, is, I think, a defining characteristic of the site. And it, it, it's a wine that ages extremely well, too. So um, almost always, you know, you were talking about halibut earlier. I, I probably wouldn't be pairing Freedom Hill Pinot Noir with halibut. Um, but uh, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have like a, uh, either a lamb shank or a ribeye or something a little bit heavier, this wine can hold up beautifully to those kind of cuisines and courses because it's got big structure and big shoulders. Um, and the tannins tannins on the wine just have plenty of density and richness. So I think it carries all that black fruit really well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so we'll do uh, one more dip from Pinot Noir to, uh, to, to showcase for you guys. It's kind of fun to, to see this wine. Um, I want to say the Liberty Bell is kind of the little sister of, of the Freedom Hill bottling. Um, it comes from our, um, our, our younger blocks at Freedom Hill, which by today's standards wouldn't be, be considered young. Um, uh, the Freedom Hill was originally planted in 1986 or seven. And uh, these blocks were planted in 2008 and nine. So they're not, they're not young blocks anymore, but for us, they're the youngest blocks at Freedom Hill. Um, and we wanted to create um, a separate bottling from Freedom Hill that would kind of express those sites. So this is kind of at the top crest of the hill. Um, it's almost 650 foot elevation. And these are from the Liberty blocks up, up top. So we have uh, 115, um, triple seven and um, uh, Vadensville clone up at those Liberty blocks. And we selected, I think this blend was maybe 18 barrels for the Liberty Bell bottling. So kind of fun. Do you, do you want another glass? Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So or I can make two. Oh, no. yeah. It's working, this guy. So, mm -hmm. um, so we started doing the Freedom Bell just a number of years ago, five or six years ago, bottling the, the Liberty Bell separately. Um, for me, it tends to be, it showcases a little bit more of that kind of youthful component. Um, it's a pretty flashy wine. If you like flashy Pinot Noirs, I think the Liberty Bell tends to have a lot of just that unctuous, flashy fruit. Um, it's not quite as structured as the traditional Freedom Hill bottling, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a jammy mouthful, full to be sure. So really fun wine to... Um, uh, to sequester and keep separate and bottle separately in the share. It's been a big hit with our, uh, you know, well, everybody we poured it for, I think. It's the same vintage, but just a little bit uh, younger blocks at the top of Freedom Hill. It's lighter on the palate, I think, on the whole, don't you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Structurally, yes. Yeah, yeah, just, it doesn't have the tannin density or exactly. kind of that, yeah. that sort of brooding character isn't so much manifest in this wine. It's right, more like yeah, a, it's just a little, it just seems a little more plush. quaffable. Yeah, you know. quaffable. Yeah. And I don't know, it's just my predilection for sure, but I, I uh, you know, all these wines uh, require some cogitation for sure. You know, but but the, uh, the Liberty Bell may be less so. 
and just drink it. You know. But I do like wines, and I, I, it causes me to think about them. Everything causes me to think about them. That represses my, uh, uh, my, my verbal capacity, I think. I think it enhances it. The, um, yeah? At certain thresholds, yes. Do you, do you, <laughs> do you, do you feel, do you feel is, it, it might be, it, is that uh, aspect? You're almost there. Oh, keep okay, going. okay, keep, keep going. going. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, well, good. Let's keep, keep, going. Let's keep, keep going. going. Keep pouring. So, what do you say? Yeah, I think the, the Liberty Bell is just like, a, for me, uh, in the glass here, it, it's a, a little bit less structured than the traditional Freedom Hill bottling, but it's really plush and just sort of fresh and really vibrant on the fruit entry. Um, it's sort of lip smacking good, I guess. Uh, I can't put that on the back labels, but uh, yeah, it, it's a fun sort of differentiation from Freedom Hill while still keeping a lot of those characteristics. It's a little bit of a departure from, from that traditional Freedom Hill bottling. Yeah, smoking good vintage. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a good tour. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, it was a vintage that kind of, I don't want to say snuck up on me. I knew it was really good, but I really didn't snuck, snuck up on me, sneaked up on me. I don't know. He's, uh, he's got the MFA. You probably so, say wreaking havoc, too. I don't say wreaking havoc. Oh, good. Yeah, you <laughs> bled me dry that one. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, so where was I? I don't know. Thanks. That's awesome. So uh, they're, the sneaked, vintage sneaked, 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 sneaked up, on up on me, yeah. Yeah, sneaked up on me, the vintage. But I, I agree. You know, it's, it, it, it gained, it gained a, a lot of stature in the cellar, I thought, with every, you know, that, that spring. Mm, yeah, stature and definition for me. And it's a, a vintage that I, I, I really um, enjoyed learning about um, as the wines kind of unfolded and, and, and evolved in the cellar for me. It was really fun. Um, it was really fun to see. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty delicious. I think they're wines that will age really well, too. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned about having kind of some cool climate kind of structure. I think they are cool climate, cool vintage structure. Um, I think they'll, they'll have really nice aging capacity, too. Yeah. Um, they're drinking well now, but they'll last for a couple decades, too. I think that's a hallmark of our wine. So if you have the opportunity to drink them now, drink them order more <laughs> and uh and then seller those um i think we'll we'll probably do a session for on the fly we'll have uh, some older wines we'll take you guys through some some vintage wines as well that, we'll that would be fun pilfer from the family cellar for you yeah. down yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah okay you have to go fishing for them in your cellar yeah okay i can do that I can do that good i had a 2000 this week yeah, so we won't go into it, but yeah. we'll we'll do that. We'll teaser for a later. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a that's a teaser for the next segment. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so welcome everybody to our tasting room, and sorry you can't be here right now, uh, but we will be reopening soon, and I uh, can't wait to host you here in the Dundee Hills. And we're with you in spirit. With, with you in spirit, spirit. quite <laughs> literally. Um, yeah, thank you for all your support. You guys have been great as always. Um, you make our winery what it is. And our team and our farms and our farming partners make our wines what they are. And uh, certainly much appreciated everybody's support and, uh, and perseverance. And hey, chins up, bottoms up. That's what we say. So <laughs> really appreciate it. And thank you so much. Enjoy.